Go ahead and call the uh, regular meeting of the Board of Directors for September in, in the session here. Can I get a roll call? Uh, here. 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 Thank you, Darlene. Of course, now I'm not organizing. Public comments. The public shall have the opportunity to directly address the board on any items of interest. Public comments on items not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the board are welcome, subject to reasonable time limitations for each speaker. If you wish to address the board at this time, please state your name and lot number and reserve your comments to no more than three minutes so that others may be allowed to speak. No action will be taken. Each item of business will be introduced by the president. Public comment for that item will be open. The public will have the opportunity to, to speak on that item. Public comment for that item will then be closed and no additional public comment will be allowed. At that time, the board will discuss the item and then take action. Do we have anybody wishing to make public comment tonight? If so, step up to the podium and give us your lot number. Seeing none. We'll close public comment. Consent calendar. Consent calendar items are considered routine and will be approved by one motion. There will be no discussion of the items unless the director requests a specific item be removed. Do we have any items that wish to be removed? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I move to approve the consent calendar. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the consent calendar. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I'm an I as well. Passes unanimously. Uh, minutes. Uh, first up are the approve the minutes of the August 15, 2017 uh, meeting. So moved. We got a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and second. Do we have any comments? Questions? Anything else? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Second set of minutes is for the uh, September 5, uh, 2017 uh, special meeting for our board planning session. Do you have a motion to approve those minutes? I have a motion. All right. Rob uh, moves. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and second. Any other further comment, questions? Yeah, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm, I'm not abstaining. Okay, Larry abstains. Okay, next up is the uh, president's report. We met an executive session uh, today and we passed minutes from the previous executive session of August 15th and we discussed uh, legal issues. That's the end of my report. Next up is the uh, general manager's report. Uh, the first item I have is renewal of the insurance policy. I'm looking for a motion to ratify the renewal of the general liability, uh, property, business auto, employer benefits, inland marine, pollution, a workers' comp and crime and a $10 million umbrella policy for a premium of 71946 and to ratify the workman's compensation policy with employer's preferred insurance company for an estimated premium of 54937 uh, A little bit of history. All policies were renewed on September 1st, 2017. A spreadsheet is attached showing the uh, five-year premium history. The renewal premiums are approximately $2,534 less than last year's premium. This is the fifth year in a row that we've had a premium decrease. And also I'd like to note that we went out to two different brokers and they probably hit uh, five to six markets between them. And so we had probably 10 to 12 carriers uh, bidding on the insurance. And so I think we had a very competitive environment. Um, and uh, so if I could have a motion to ratify the policies that are already in, in place. 
Need two motions? You can do it all in one motion. Just combine the workman's comp with the other insurance. My motion is to ratify the renewal of the general liability property, business, auto, employer benefits, inland marine pollution, workers' comp, crime, and a $10 million umbrella policy for a premium of $71,946. And to ratify the workers' compensation policy with the employer's preferred insurance company for an estimated premium of $54,937. I second the motion. All right, you got a motion and second to approve uh, the insurance policies as recommended. Uh, any questions, comments? I have one comment, I guess. The, I mean, I, it's great that we keep going down every year. Is it all because of competition, you think, or are we doing anything that helps uh, drive the cost down, too? Obviously, our claim. Yeah, we haven't had a claim in a lifetime on our liability policy. I mean, we've had smaller ones on our, on our works comp, and actually our, our rating went a little bit higher this year because of the small, we had several small claims last year that affected our, our, our mod ratings. So that mod rating is actually up. The carriers gave us a bigger discount. And so we renewed with the existing carrier, but I think because he saw the claims were low that he gave us a, a higher discount to keep the premium about or a little bit lower than it was last year. And then also I'd like to point out that the $10 million liability policy also extends over your DNO policy. And that only happens with Philadelphia is one of the few carriers that will extend that over the DNO policy. Uh, and we did continue our coverage with DNO, so that's nice that instead of only having $2 million limit, you have the $10 million limit on your DNO. Uh, so you could be reckless now, Sam, for up to $12 million, I guess. Um, I have a question. Um, do, we, do we do training with employees on an annual basis to, uh, regarding the workers' call and reporting process? Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the carrier does come out, or, or he either comes out and does the training or sends us training material to conduct it ourselves, yes. And things like safety and all that kind of stuff? Right, we have our safety manuals and everything in place also. So I think that the... the both the management staff and the sort of the rank and file employees should be commended for, for the, for not only on work comp but all the, but all the policies for running a, a good shop, I guess as you will. And, and I, I keep think us. about four years ago we were looking at a comp rate of just the comp was about one hundred fifty thousand. The policy was, and so it's gone down almost one hundred thousand in the last four years. So. All right. Anything else? So we have a motion and second to approve the policies as recommended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, the next item is the Greens Park update. Uh, all the concrete, with the exception of the parking lot, is finished. Uh, the landscape contractor is going to be starting on Monday. Uh, we'd hope to have the playground equipment installation started on Monday also, but we're still waiting for a, uh, a time from the installation crew to start installing that equipment. When, when do we anticipate the entire park's going to be done? Uh, still, my problem is going to be getting the. Uh, we're, we're wanting to keep the parking lot area unfinished a little bit longer so we can get some materials into the park site and not have to drive over the new concrete. And then when, after we do put that concrete in, we have to wait for it to cure before we put the asphalt up against it. So that's probably going to be our what's going to set us back. And so I know we're looking into October right now. Okay. I just was wondering if I'm going to have the opportunity to exercise you, you a presidential session. I, I hope you do, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, next item is the Laguna Joaquin update. Uh, the RMA is coordinating a lowering of Laguna Joaquin with C CSD and the CIA. Uh, the water release will start on September 25th with cleanup uh, work commencing on September 27th. Uh, we'll be doing cleanup for about three days. RMA and CSD will field a joint crew uh, they'll be working under Rod's direction. Uh, their purpose will be to remove as much organic matter as possible and to replenish the lake with clean water. So we're going to be taking the lake down to about a foot. And so we're going to probably be putting about 80% 80 80 to 85% of the volume back in as fresh river water. And because the river flows are high this year, we have the opportunity to do it. Plus, we don't have many fish in the lake right now. so. Uh, typically, you wouldn't want to drain your lake that low because you'd lose a lot of fish, but since the fish aren't there, we can go ahead and do that this year. So some benefit, I guess, to the prior mishap. <laughs> Make lemon out of lemonades, I guess, as they say. Any, any questions about the lake lowering? So this, uh, this press release that you shared with us, how's that going to be given? Uh, it's been given to the River Valley Times and uh, .com, and we had a meeting with them this morning to, to go over some of the the information in the in the release. So, so that'd be on the way that people around the lake will know about things? Yes. Yeah, we're not doing any door to door flyers, no. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And that's the end of my report. All right. Thanks, Greg. Uh, committee activities. Finance Committee, Cheryl. Well, the Finance Committee met today. Um, and <laughs> we met today and actually um, just went over the reserve study. Um, Colleen kind of guided us through that and looked at the goals um, that were being proposed and um, I think that was about all we did. Um, we just, that, that will come to, back to the board to, uh, for further consideration when we do our draft budget um, meetings. Yeah, I was just going to report that in, in the under the uh, finance committee tab is the uh, the draft budget and reserve study, and I think October fourth is when we're going to have the uh, the budget meeting. Uh, right now, we're looking at a potential dues increase of about two point six percent, which is three dollars and forty six cents. That's without the uh, projects that were identified in the gold planning workshop. Uh, if you add those goals in, you're looking at about another two dollars and fifty cents. And so we will have an opportunity on, on October 4th to discuss and, and see what, what you guys want to go forward with next year. Right. So do we need to do anything with the reserve study now or we wait till the budget workshop and all that next? Wait until the budget workshop, yeah. All right, anything else, Joe? Yeah, no okay, thank you. Uh, ARC, Sam. <clears throat> ARC's had a uh, couple of meetings uh, since our last board meeting. And uh, during that time, we approved minutes. We uh, approved or recommend some approval of some common area leases, some driveway variances, some swimming pools. Uh, we've got two new houses that are coming before us. Uh, one will be brought in for a final <coughs> review after a couple of meetings they've had with us uh, at our next ARC meeting. Uh, actually, both, both will be coming back before us. Uh, we've approved some uh, new roofs for houses out here. One of them was a little bit, uh, one of the roofs that come before us. We've, I didn't know what it was. Uh, the request was to replace his shake roof with a standing seam metal roof, which meant nothing to me at the time, except <laughs> I, I didn't know what it was. I never heard of it. So. Well, if you go up into the mountains, you'll see those yeah. with the nice blue roofs or the green roofs on the, the cabins up in the mountains. Nice looking metal roofs. We have about six houses out here that have that. Um, so they have been approved in the past. So we didn't have much option uh, but to approve it since it's been done in the past and there was nothing derogatory to not approve it. But we talked to the, the gentleman about it and he said, well, you know, I just like those roofs. And we said, well, just think about where you are and your neighbors and you're replacing a shake roof with a really obviously different roof as opposed to tile or shake or some the approved mostly out here. And he said, you know what, I'll go talk to my neighbors and just see. I said, you know, we'll approve this, but we're highly recommending that you not do this and reconsider. At least go talk to your neighbors. Well he did and he came back and he's gonna put a different you're going to put a different, you're going to put a tile roof on his house instead of that particular roof. So uh, I, we thought that was very, I don't know, generous of the guy, but he was said, well, I hadn't thought of that, and I'll go talk to my neighbor and see what they say. So just for reference out there, your other residents, if you want to do something a little controversial, you might want to talk to your neighbors, and then it might change your mind, but if you want to be a good neighbor. Uh, let's see. We, we denied uh, some of the driveway parking variances that came before us for reasons. And, you know, we get a lot of those. Our demographics out here are really changing. We're having a lot more families that are now maturing. And so you got two or three kids, and now you've got 
two or three additional drivers and you're living in a house with maybe a two-car garage or three-car garage and now you end up with four or five cars and and it's uh we get we get some of the residents that are highly opposed to this but we are living in a world that's changing and uh, sometimes we don't have much choice but to try to take care of the residents whose kids in particular have grown up here and now they're driving so when you see that we've approved variances for driveway parking uh, we strongly look into those things we measure garages we measure driveways we 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 go to a lot of trouble to make sure that when we do approve one of those it's really it's it's a need it's not a want and so just for uh reference to that i would i would say on that um i think our rules allow obviously for the variances and i don't have too much problem if somebody wants to have two cars if they have the need demonstrated need to be in the driveway once you get beyond two cars and you're talking three cars or or more i don't know if that's not stretching the 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 cc and r variance policy I, it, too far but but uh it's uh, it's one of the things that's that's come into play and how do you tell a family of uh that was had three or four little kids and now those kids are 16 17 18 in college or in you know they're still living at home and 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 in the years past the economy had been such that kids were actually moving back home and um how do you tell them well hey uh, you know you just can't park those cars here well we do really tell them that you get a variance and if you're gonna don't park on the street if you get a variance to park in your driveway if you have to move one of those cars in the mornings or in the evening to get cars out to go to work or go to school and you have to park a car temporarily on the street when that car gets out put that car back in the driveway and and we do really strongly encourage those people asking for variance and so we have some narrow streets out here and i just want folks to know that we really try to keep the the beauty of this community the way it is but it's a struggle sometimes if we want to take care of our residents and that's it's a need kind of thing as opposed to one we've got those folks that they got two people five cars and three of them are muscle cars or ego cars or whatever you want to call them and they say wow and i said hey listen i park my extra stuff across the street and i pay to park it if you got that kind of stuff so we have got into it with some folks who have those kind of vehicles it's not a need it's kind of a want and so we we push back real hard uh, as much as we think we legally can to see that that kind of stuff doesn't happen all the time you know sam uh, that was one of the things when i first got on the board that i appreciated when you explained things to us like that and that i learned just by watching some of the uh, information that would come to us i remember a particular case where um, the family was using they had a two-car garage but they were using half the garage for storage basically they you know they had their, not only their washer and dryer in there but they had boxes all over the place and they couldn't park their second car in there and they wanted a variance for it to be out on the driveway and we wouldn't let them do that and you know i i don't think people understand that you know that garages are supposed to be for your cars and not supposed to be for your storage and so it was it was just uh it was informative for me to watch how that process rolled out i appreciate all the stuff that you do well we we do go out now and and we have uh, compliance go out take pictures of your garage we measure the garage we make sure that what you're asking for we make sure they say well my vehicle won't fit in there or uh one person was saying well i can't I, I i can't park my car there on the driveway it has to be so close to the edge of the of the driveway that uh, my passenger my kids are gonna have to get out in the grass or the mud or the dirt or saying we'll park it on the other side so you have to get out in the grass and about i'm that's not a good reason that's a one and so no you can't have that well, little kids can suck it up and get out in the grass and if they're old like my son just <laughs> This, like I said, don't let the door hit you on the way out. This person got really <laughs> upset with my attitude, and but it, that's just the way it is. We, it's got to be a need, folks. It can't be a want. And well, you know, my other half, it, 
may sideswipe my truck if I'm parked that, that sorry, <laughs> you know, that's a want, that's not a need. So we do try to take care and keep the community in a condition that everybody likes it, uh, or most people like it. Uh, I know we had a person who wanted to widen their driveway by eight foot nine inches. That sounded like another parking place to me. <laughs> Not just widening your driveway. So, no. I mean, so it's uh, ARC, I got to say, folks, is, uh, we're always kind of looking for people on that committee. So if you want to work on something that really deals with a lot in the community, you can. I apply. guess I wouldn't complain if you told my neighbor that he had to park his Porsche in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let me get on with with. I'm um, talking too much as usual. They tell me so. I'll move on. We have. Uh, let's see. I want to put this all in one. One uh, motion. I have. Uh, Okay, I have three uh, common area leases that are result of a change of ownership and all the required fees and uh, have been paid through escrow. So my motion is to approve the uh, common area lease, existing common area lease for lot 118 Tom, lot 179. And lot 1991. All right, we have a motion to approve the common area leases for transfer of ownership for lots 118, 179, and 1991. And we have a second. Do we have any comments? Any discussion on that? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any also, have. Pass uh, unanimously. Go ahead, Sam. Sorry. Also have a common area lease for lot 1475, and we've looked into this, and it meets the conditions set forth in Civil Code Section 4600B3E, which states to transfer the burden of management and maintenance of any common area that is generally inaccessible and not of general use for the membership at large. Uh, they want to lease that common area for a, uh, it's going to have a five foot ornamental metal fence, a swimming pool, concrete decking, a wood deck, a retaining wall, natural stone walkway, and landscaping. My motion is to approve that common area lease. I have a motion to approve the common area lease for lot 1475. Second. second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, any discussion? Um, I just had one comment. I don't know if there was one objection, but I didn't think it was a substantive objection to it. And then it did have a, an, an objection. However, it was the objection was that during the construction of the pool, et cetera, there would be noise and dust. And well, if you're going to build a pool and, and some fencing and decking, there's going to be noise, and obviously there should be some dust. And so. We took that into consideration, but approved it, it recommend approval anyway. Yeah, like I said, I think it was non, a non-substantive objection. And then I also noticed, and I don't think I've noticed in any of these we've done before, uh, a letter to PG&E. Is that something new that we have to do? And we don't have PG&E out here, so no, I guess. We don't have Okay, I figured it was some sort of governmental. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's just more. Is that free. new? Because, like I said, I don't remember seeing that before. No, most of the time they don't respond. Oh, I gotcha. So it just ended up on our packet because they did. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Anything else? So we have a motion and second to approve the common area lease for uh, lot 1475. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. And that's the end of my report, Mr. We President. have we have another one, don't oh, we? For lot 1729. Wasn't that the one I just? Uh, that was 1475 that you just did. Hello. Well, I may have missed one here in my packet. <laughs> Obviously. 
Well, um, 1475. It's right after that one. And there's one after that. Ornamental fence, sewing pool, concrete decking, retaining wall. Oh, there is one here, if I can find the darn thing. It's off of Venado. Yes. Uh, sorry about that. I'll get it in a minute. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, uh, common area lease for lot 1729. That will include, uh, again, a five-foot high ornamental metal fence, swimming pool, concrete decking, retaining wall, landscaping, existing retaining wall, and propane tank with enclosure. Um, it's an amendment to an existing common area lease, and we recommend approval because it meets all the requirements, and that's civil code. 4,600 again. Now we have a motion to approve a common area lease amendment for lot 1729. We have a second. Have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Does this increase the, the common area lease lot or are they just redoing what's in their existing? No, they've got, it's an increase. Mm -hmm. Note that there's no objections to it? No, there's, um, there's no objections. Yeah. So, any other comments, questions? Okay, all those in favor of approving the uh, common area lease amendment for lot 1729, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passage unanimously. I'll, I'll stop now. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Uh, communication committee, Cheryl. The communication committee did not meet this month. Okay, thank you. Uh, compliance committee, you got to handle that, Denise? Um, yes, the committee met on September 11th. We had a two and a half hour meeting. Um, we reviewed and held nine appeals and reviewed and approved 71 violations. And that's the end of Tim's report. Uh -huh. Thank you, Denise. Unfortunately, I wasn't on one of those lists. So. <laughs> it's always good to know. Um, governing Documents Committee, that's my committee. We didn't meet this month. Uh, maintenance Committee, Larry. Maintenance Committee, we met on September 11th. Um, approved the minutes of the July 10th meeting. We did not meet in August. Um, there was an awful lot to report. Rod uh, uh, spent some time updating us on all the projects and the in the area, some of which you've already heard about the Greens Park, and and we talked about the cleanup of the lake, uh, the front lake here, um, and uh, some ideas about how to minimize the uh, uh, the algae uh, getting in the the pumps, the circulation pumps for irrigation, and uh, that's, that one's kind of on hold, but we'll probably need to address it by spring of next year, um, and. Uh, Rod uh, discussed the irrigation um, in the common area and uh, how it's uh, uh, how, it, how it operates and how the uh, the pump that we currently pump water out of Laguna Joaquin and, and distribute it through the system works and and the complications that it, that exists and we, we we begin we're beginning some dialogue about looking at the cost for for trying to update or modernize our system, our, our irrigation system for the common area, uh, which was, was 40 years old at, at best. And the, the maintenance, the upkeep on it is beginning to take its toll. So uh, as time goes on, we'll have to get more serious about uh, discussing that um, more, more uh, diligently and, and the effect it'll have on our budget. And uh, we also talked about a, a low flow diversion pipe, which, will, which we will begin to implement in this late cleanup next week. Um, that will, um, will entail some work while the water's down and then further work uh, in the fall or the spring uh, to minimize the impact of the, uh, the uh, concentration of algae that goes in, the, in this lake to try and 
create a, an, an atmosphere of, of future um, uh, activities that will minimize this, the impact on our, on our irrigation pump. Anything else, Rod? No. Okay, that's it. All right, thanks, Larry. Before we move on to the nominating committee, I noticed, since we don't have a communications committee, I saw I noticed Brandon back there. Does Greenfield have anything that they want to say here? No. You don't have to, so that's good. <laughs> thanks. thanks. That'll give you the opportunity. All right, nominating committee, are you going to handle that one too, Denise? Um, yes. Um, the nominating committee met on September 13th and reviewed the slate of candidates. If the candidates are here, if you want to come up to the front so they can get you on camera, if you want to do that, and I can introduce you, them to you. They weren't all able to make it this evening, but I'll do it alphabetically. So Stephanie Bianchi, <laughs> Joanne Brandt. There's always a rose between the thorns. <laughs> okay, Stephanie Bianchi, Joanne Brandt, James Crowder, Tom Reimers, and Gary Wolf. That's five people, there's three people up there. Yes, <laughs> two of them were unable to make it. I said that earlier, I guess you didn't hear me. Anyway, so, okay, Jim, I wasn't sure. <laughs> and Joanne Brandt and Tom Reimers. Perfect. Right. Thank you all for volunteering. <laughs> yes, thank you for uh, agreeing to step up and run. Good uh, luck campaigning, and, or not campaigning as the case may be. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, so that says board action, but it really isn't. Okay. We yeah. just need to find. But I do. I do want to thank. We have five candidates for three, three. spots. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's nice that we have five members of the community want to step up, and uh, and I'm sure you'll be an improvement on Sam, myself, and and Tim right there off, off the bat. So. I will go up enormously. <laughs> so uh, thank you, thank you, really for for running, and uh, I know we'll have some events. I think we'll discuss here in a minute. That's so. The other motions that we have for this evening is one for the board to establish the date of record as October 5th, 2017 um, for the annual members meeting. And that's the day that whoever owns a property on, um, whoever are property owners on October 5th will be the ones that get a ballot and get to vote. So if you could, uh, somebody could make a motion on that, that would be great. All right, can we get a motion to set the Establish October 5th as the date of record. I so move. Okay, Alex. October moves. second. Okay, we've got a motion and second to approve October 5th as the date of record for the annual members meeting. Uh, any further discussion of that? Um, only comment I would have on that, just so people know, it's required by our bylaws um, that we do it. And you have to be a member in good standing to, to vote under the bylaws. It's not something the board's making up or, or doing. Uh, so that's, that's why that exists. Okay, all, the, all in favor of uh, the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passage unanimously. Yeah. All right, Denise, next. So the next item is establishing the date of the annual me members meeting, um, November 30th. We typically have it about two weeks earlier, but um, Thanksgiving kind of falls in there and messes us up, so just the way the calendar falls. So if we could have a motion to do that, that would be great. So moved. All right, we got a motion to set the annual meeting for November 30th. Do we have a second? I'll second it. A motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. What was that date again? November 30th. And that will be the last day to vote. So when the ballots go out about mid-October, people can vote any time from then until November 30th. And if they get their ballots in by noon the day before, they can be entered into a, a drawing for prizes. And let's get a quorum, because I don't want to have to extend my term past November 30th. Or <laughs> we'll work really meetings. hard to do that. <laughs> when, will ballot, when will the ballots go out? They'll go out the second or third week of October. Um, and so we've got the date for candidates night set on Monday, October 16th at 7 p.m. here in this building. 
And we'll, the committee will uh, come up with questions that will be sent to all the candidates and audience members will have the opportunity to ask questions also. And then we've got tally committee appointments um, that we need to do. Uh, Frank Dininger, Dininger, Mary Lou Dininger, Brian Hotman, Kevin O'Keefe, Bob Pritchard, Mary Silvis, and Dave Witt. And Dick's already been approved as the director or whatever the... Correct. He and Ken Poole both are. Yeah. Yes. So if we could get a motion on that, that'd be great. So moved. Can we get a motion to approve the slate of candidates for the tally committee? We have a second. Second. We get a motion and a second to approve uh, the tally committee as recommended uh, by Denise. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we've got two new volunteers on that committee this year, so we're pretty excited about that, too. Okay. <laughs> and that ends Who are the new ones, but just so we know? Uh, Brian Hotman and Kevin O'Keefe. Okay. There we go. So. Yeah, because I recognize most of them. So that ends Tim's nominating committee report. There you go. Tim did well for being absent. No. <laughs> All right, uh, Recreation Committee, Alex. Well, thank you, Mr. President, but unfortunately, uh, the Recreation Committee didn't meet, so we don't have uh, anything to report out. Uh, however, uh, Denise, is there anything to announce? Well, we had a great attendance at the Summerfest Bingo. Um, people won lots of great prizes, so that was, that's always fun. I think, Alex, you took your niece and nephew to Summerfest for the first time this year. Oh, and they loved it. That's yeah. great. They loved it. They, they couldn't event. wait to take home their goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> We've had the goldfish from there, uh, trust me. We've had two goldfish, and one lasted quite a while, the other not so long. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> then I know some others that are, I mean, they, they, I mean, you could put them out in the lake out here. They're, they're, it seems like a couple of feet, feet long now. But uh, Yeah, I'm sad I got to miss the bingo this year, because usually I, I'm lucky enough to win a prize. So. <laughs> Yeah, that no, was good. So. <laughs> not that the not that the gaming's rigged. But <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> and speak, speaking of bingo, do we have a bingo night coming up? We have one coming up the end of October. Okay. All right. Anything else out of Alex for you? That is it from recreation. All right. <laughs> All right. The next uh, we don't have any correspondence. The next. Uh, Board of Directors meeting will be held uh, Tuesday, October 17, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. in the RMA building. That's the next regular meeting. Our budget workshop will be held on October 4th at 6 p.m. <coughs> 6 p.m. here at the RMA building. And then we have the canon at tonight on October 16th, as we previously discussed. So we'll be busy in October. Uh, and so without objection, we're adjourned. <laughs>